Today we are going to talk about uh, the kernel uh, TLS handshakes. Uh, this section is the third part uh, of uh, discussion. Uh, previously, there were uh, two our talks on previous NetDF conferences. And today we will have a look on uh, why uh, kernel TLS handshakes matter. Uh, we will look onto some benchmarks and we'll uh, uh, discuss design proposal for the Linux mainstream. Uh, in our case, we develop um, uh, Tempestev W, which is uh, application delivery controller. Uh, application delivery controllers are typically HTTP proxies, which also provide you a lot of uh, security features like uh, DDoS protection, TLS uh, or SSL offloading, uh, web security, and so on. And uh, typical players in the market are F5, Big IP, or Fortinet, ADC. And uh, Tempest FW is uh, considered to be an open source alternative to such uh, proprietary appliances. So we do care about high performance uh, TLS handshakes. And uh, TLS handshakes is a typical, uh, very important uh, measurement in um, technical specifications of the appliances. For example, how many connections per, per second you can establish, uh, I mean, TLS uh, connections per second, or how many HTTPS transactions per second you can make. Uh, this is also very good uh, video uh, from a F5 uh, guy who uh, compared performance of uh, Big IP and Nginx on top of DBTK using a stack uh, TCP uh, IP stack on top of DBTK inside the virtual machine using only uh, CPU. And uh, in that uh, measurements, uh, Big IP wins about 30 to 50% uh, transactions per second. And uh, this is because Big IP uses uh, their own uh, TLS implementation. So TLS is very, very crucial for us. However, if we talk about uh, generic uh, Linux users, there are uh, cases uh, where you can benefit from uh, faster TLS handshakes or uh, kernel TLS handshakes in particular. Uh, for example, there are uh, DDoS uh, attacks on TLS handshakes and everybody uh, probably can win from the faster handshakes to mitigate such kinds of attacks. And uh, this uh, particular concern about uh, security. security. Uh, so, uh, Actually, it does make sense to uh, separate your uh, private uh, private key and all security sensitive data uh, outside of your main working threads. Uh, so, uh, in Vanish case, uh, guys uh, use separate uh, hitch TLS proxy uh, outside of the main Vanish uh, worker process. Uh, so if you separate uh, key management and all security sensitive uh, data like uh, TLS uh, session keys and so on outside of the uh, main working logic and uh, actually this logic is considered to be evolved very, very quickly and you could uh, put a lot of bugs into production uh, thanks to the uh, quick development. Uh, in particular, in uh, CloudBleed uh, case for CloudFair, the guy starts the uh, blog post from the world that uh, no one um, client uh, private key were com compromised uh, thanks to separation of uh, the main uh, working logic from the uh, TLS uh, termination logic. So uh, security can be generally uh, improve it uh, by separation of uh, private key management inside of uh, kernel space and keeping uh, the main working logic in user space uh, in worker process. Um, besides this uh, topic, there are also uh, good, good to have faster handshakes. You see that uh, even uh, fast session resumption can be uh, even more faster with uh, kernel TLS. Uh, speaking about uh, performance, let's have a look on um, profile. This uh, profile for OpenSSL and Nginx with uh, NIST uh, elliptic curve uh, 256. 
And in the profile, uh, we just establish, uh, in this case, a lot of uh, TLS uh, connections. And in the profile, we see that uh, most of the calls are about uh, memory management, uh, copies, the line, and so on. Uh, generally speaking, uh, routines uh, not in, uh, not about cryptography mathematics. Uh, also, uh, interesting routines, uh, interesting in our uh, presentation, um, in red in the slide, and also there are uh, blue, two routines in blue, uh, second and third. It's about uh, Montgomery multiplication and Montgomery squaring. We will uh, talk more about the uh, routines later in the presentation. But this, uh, um, in this slide, we uh, can, can see that we can dramatically improve performance of uh, TLS handshakes uh, just by eliminating uh, the overhead uh, of memory management and uh, copies and zeroing. Uh, by the way, uh, since um, the NIST uh, curve is still, uh, it's uh, quite old curve, curve is still important because uh, you need, need uh, to use the curve for ECDSA uh, certificate. So while the curve uh, is still important and it's old, uh, we still uh, have have to have the curve uh, to manage our uh, certificates, and uh, the uh, ma the mathematical algorithms are involved in the curve implementations. Uh, some of them are just outdated. We'll uh, talk more about this uh, later. During the presentation, we'll uh, use uh, two benchmark tools. The first one, uh, TLS PEF, is developed by our team. Uh, basically, it just establishes as many uh, TLS connections as possible and drops the connection. Uh, VLK is a uh, very widely used um, HP uh, benchmarking tool, and it also can use um, uh, OpenSSL or another SSL uh, libraries for TLS, and we use the benchmark uh, to, uh, to measure HPS uh, transaction performance. In uh, our performance uh, measurements, we use a uh, virtual machine. Unfortunately, we had no uh, machine with uh, virtual API C and uh, physical pair of physical uh, machine with very fast uh, as a net connection. Uh, so uh, to start, uh, to, to start from, from the source code, uh, actually we started uh, TMPS TLS from MBIT uh, TLS uh, and uh, we moved MBIT TLS uh, to uh, the kernel and uh, we used uh, MBIT TLS uh, because of two main factors. The first one is it's uh, very portable. We uh, needed only one uh, human month to move it uh, into kernel. The second thing is that MBIT TLS provides very serious security. Uh, however, MBIT TLS is too slow. It uh, doesn't care about performance at all. And uh, there are a lot of uh, things which can be improved in MBIT TLS. Uh, to improve uh, performance on bit TLS, we uh, develop uh, some of mathematical algorithms on our own. And also we use uh, Wolf SSL for uh, some routines which we uh, can't uh, make better. Uh, we didn't use uh, Wolf SSL uh, because uh, it's very, very large and uh, it's uh, not so easy to port it into the Linux kernel. Uh, it's very fast and we will see benchmarks for Wolf SSL today, uh, but there might be some uh, security issues uh, in the library. And we uh, I also cover the issues with data. Uh, so um, speaking about MBIT TLS, uh, we, let's start from the benchmark of the original MBIT TLS uh, being ported into the Linux kernel and um, our current implementation. Uh, we see that uh, the original implementation is about 30 times slower than current uh, TMPS TLS code. Uh, this is just a proof uh, how MVTOS is slow. Uh, 
Uh, the next thing is uh, let's see how how we uh, ca compare with uh, current open set and nginx performance this uh, benchmark on uh, uh, virtual machine we see that uh, current MPS tls is about 40 uh, percent uh, better performance in connections uh, tls connections per second and uh, provides about four uh, times lower latency also in average also, if we see the best cases for performance peak and uh, latency, we also provide bet better numbers. Uh, the next thing is about uh, 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 the previous slide was about uh, full TLS uh, uh, handshake, but this one is about uh, TLS uh, session resumption. In uh, this case, we provide about 80% better performance and the same latency as Nginx and open SSL. Uh, however, in uh, our tests, we observed uh, spikes, uh, huge spikes of latency. And uh, this uh, uh, GitHub issue, which we need to work on uh, more in our implementation. Uh, we also compared uh, different Linux uh, kernel versions, uh, 4.14 and uh, 5.7 in uh, TLS session resumption. And we see that uh, the old kernels provide a bit uh, higher uh, performance. This is mostly because of uh, recent uh, uh, attacks mitigation in uh, uh, Intel CPUs. Uh, also speaking about um, the recent CPU vulnerabilities, we assumed that KPTI will uh, impact the performance a lot. However, it actually isn't the case and we didn't observe more than 4% of performance degradation uh, with uh, KPTI enabled. And this is uh, pretty different from what MariaDB observed. MariaDB uh, server observed up to 40% uh, percent performance degradation with KPTI. Uh, actually, the reason for this is that uh, TLS handshakes uh, don't involve so many uh, system calls, uh, either for network I.O. or memory allocation or uh, random uh, generation. Uh, this slide is uh, maybe kind of uh, obvious, but it's always good to see some numbers. This uh, how uh, TLS uh, handshake uh, impacts the uh, HP as uh, transaction performance. Uh, this this uh, in this slide uh, previously we uh, discussed uh, how the uh, network performance differs in uh, open cell case nginx or for tempest tls but in this uh, slide we see uh, how the uh, cryptography mathematic uh, is fast uh, this uh, comparison of benchmark uh, results for open cell wolf ssl and tempest tls we see that wolf ssl uh, seems the fastest one uh, however this uh, this uh, question why the CDHE uh, so fast than the CDSA. Uh, typically, CDHE uh, uses uh, unknown uh, point multiplication. I will describe about this uh, math uh, a bit later. Uh, it means that a CDSA uh, can be optimized uh, for uh, fixed point multiplication, why CDHE uh, cannot be optimized in this way. And we actually see for open cell case that CGHE is much slower than CDSA. Uh, however, it, this is not the case for Wolf SL. If we look at uh, TMPS numbers, we see that the CDHE also slower than CDSA. Uh, however, if we compare uh, TMPS benchmark results with Wolf SL and open SL, uh, actually the uh, results aren't um, completely fair. The reason is that uh, Wolf SL and Open SL uh, measure only uh, only CDSA uh, say signing and CDHE uh, secret key uh, generation. But in the case of uh, Tempesta benchmark, we uh, 
uh, benchmark as a home mathematic operations, in uh, including ephemeral case generation. Uh, it's maybe uh, not so uh, dramatic for a CDSA, but this is absolutely dramatic for a CDHA. In a CDHA, we, uh, in our case, we uh, execute uh, as much as uh, two more uh, logic uh, as uh, in comparison with Wolf SL or OpenSL. This is because uh, in our case, we have to perform um, two uh, point multiplication instead of only one. Uh, in the um, mean, meantime, while we uh, probably we're not so but in uh, raw uh, performance, uh, uh, mathematic performance comparison against OpenSL and WolfSL, we know that our mathematic uh, still isn't uh, perfect and we need to work more. Uh, however, even if we is not so uh, super optimized uh, mathematic, we see that Tempesta TLS can deliver much more performance than uh, OpenSL. Uh, this uh, exactly because uh, of reducing uh, memory copies, uh, context switches, no system calls for network I.O., less message queues on socket I.O., and so on. All the things which we discussed on the one of the first uh, slides with the Nginx and open cell profiles. Uh, speaking about elliptic uh, of uh, mathematics, uh, I want to uh, reference more is uh, NIST elliptic of uh, 256. And this is uh, a very nice um, uh, paper from uh, Guiron and Kasnov by uh, 2014. It's uh, pretty old. However, this, uh, the paper describes the real implementation of uh, current open cell implementation. Uh, in the most uh, simple case, uh, the most expensive operation in elliptic curve, uh, curves is uh, to multiply uh, point P on uh, scalar M. Scalar M is always uh, security sensitive, uh, some secret. Uh, P uh, is a secret for ECDHE and a fixed point for ECDSA. Uh, in uh, the most uh, straightforward uh, Algorithm, we just iterate each bit of the scalar, which is uh, 256 uh, bits. Uh, and uh, for each bit, we perform one point doubling, and uh, one uh, half of the cases we uh, perform point addition, the uh, se second layer of um, uh, mathematics. Uh, actually, uh, there are several. Uh, layers in uh, mathematic construction. The first layer is our point multiplication. The second one is uh, point doubling and additional. Uh, after that, there uh, we you, you can make a choice in which coordinate system you uh, you prefer to work. Uh, perform uh, point doubling and addition. It could be. Jacobian coordinates, Affin coordinates, the Chudovsky coordinates, and so on. Um, and uh, after that, uh, you have uh, uh, scalar um, operations, uh, operations on big integers, and you also uh, have modular reduction. On the top layer of um, algorithms, uh, we just saw the most straightforward implementation. However, there are recent uh, research uh, exactly in point uh, multiplication. However, OpenSL and WolfSL don't use uh, their approach. Uh, point doubling and addition uh, seems the same for all the crypto libraries. Uh, also seems all the libraries use uh, Jacobian coordinates. And if you use uh, Jacobian coordinates, you need uh, model inversion. Model inversion is the second most expensive uh, mathematic operation after uh, point uh, multiplication. Actually, point multiplication includes uh, model inversion. Uh, and there's also very recent research from Bernstein about fast model uh, inversion. And we use uh, these uh, algorithms uh, with some variations. After that, we uh, may decide which uh, model reduction we can use. There are uh, Montgomery reduction used by WolfSL and OpenSL, 
and uh, FIPS uh, reduction used originally by MVTLS. Uh, at the moment, uh, we use FIPS uh, model reduction. We applied uh, all the research which we found to, to uh, speed up the model reduction, uh, in particular the uh, work from BOSS, but it seems this uh, dead end and uh, probably we will move to Montgomery reduction at, at some point. Uh, all in all, uh, there are uh, mathematical layers. And for example, if you use uh, faster model inversion, then uh, you uh, run less um, scalar multiplication or sc scalar uh, squaring in this, this algorithms. This means uh, in terms that uh, you can uh, use different model reduction, maybe uh, model reduction with smaller overheads than Montgomery, but uh, costly at the end, like a fee, FIPS. Uh, so if you change one of the layer or of the elliptic curve uh, algorithms, you typically need to adjust all the layers above and below uh, this particular layer to make very ba balanced and well-optimized implementation. Uh, for example, uh, as an example of such optimization, we can consider uh, protection against uh, side channel attacks. There are a number of uh, different uh, side channel attacks like timing attacks, power analyzers, and so on. And usually uh, cryptography uh, libraries use different approaches to protect against uh, side channel attacks. The first one is to use uh, and construct uh, constant time algorithms uh, by design. The second one is to uh, have a non-constant time uh, algorithm uh, into add uh, additional dummy operations which can make the algorithm uh, constant time essentially. And the last approach is to use a point randomization. So if we uh, randomize our calculations, then the attacker can, cannot uh, make an assumption what was the secret because we randomized it. Uh, and uh, in this point, uh, for example, if we uh, use the technique for uh, model in, uh, inversion uh, uh, of the Bernstein, uh, Bernstein algorithm, we can uh, run up to three times uh, less number of iterations in comparison with uh, original constant time algorithm. Uh, actually, uh, modern CPUs uh, provide a DRAND uh, instruction which, which allows you uh, to get uh, random values very, very quickly. So if we uh, move from uh, constant time algorithms to point randomization, uh, uh, point randomization and non-constant time algorithms uh, using uh, the RDRAND instruction, it means that typically you can uh, go much, much faster. Uh, however, unfortunately, there are uh, recent attacks against the uh, instruction and mitigation against the attacks cost us about uh, 97 uh, percent of performance. Uh, the uh, next topic about uh, mem uh, SCA is uh, memory usage. Actually, different law libraries uh, use different approaches uh, to compute uh, for example, CDSA, uh, CDSA. Uh, actually, uh, as I mentioned before, CDSA allows you to pre-compute uh, some data for fixed point multiplication. And BTLS uh, uses very small uh, table, relatively small uh, of eight uh, kilobytes and dynamically uh, computed. OpenSL and WolfSL uh, use very similar tables of 150 kilobytes. And uh, um, OpenCell and MVTLS uh, uses full table scan on each iteration of point multiplication. Uh, the point multiplication algorithm uh, uses about 36 uh, iterations. It means that OpenCell and MVTLS uh, scans the whole tables about 36 uh, times. Uh, also, MVTLS uh, uses uh, point randomization uh, for more security. But WolfSL uh, just uses direct access uh, to the pre-computed values. The worst thing is that um, 
the table is accessed uh, depending on the security values of the uh, secret. It means that uh, measuring the time of uh, access times uh, to the table, you can uh, you, you can reveal some secret bits uh, from the uh, uh, secret scalar. And uh, having that, uh, we use a very large table, uh, which is much larger than uh, first level of uh, data cache. It's uh, probably not so uh, hard to measure difference access times. Uh, we uh, created a security issue, a security report for volume for sale for this non-constant time access. Uh, one of the uh, most uh, performance a uh, crucial part of MBTLS, why it's so slow, is uh, managing uh, big integer, also known as multi-precision integers. Uh, also, we have MPIs in the Linux kernel, and uh, most of the crypto libraries actually use uh, MPIs. However, OpenCell, WolfPestCell, and uh, current WireGuard uh, don't use uh, MPIs in hot path. But uh, MBTLS uses uh, MPIs everywhere. MPIs, uh, for example, in uh, our case of NIST curve, is a uh, 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 large integer of 32 bits, which is uh, four longs. And uh, working with uh, MPIs, you need to manage uh, the data structure, uh, like allocated uh, uh, size of bytes, how, uh, how many actual bytes are used, the sign, and so on. Uh, so uh, in MBTLS, uh, well, uh, elliptic curve uh, computation involves uh, hundreds of MPIs in each round. It means that you need to uh, allocate and then select hundreds of these small data structures. So we uh, significantly optimized MBTLS approach by introducing uh, memory pools, which are actually just uh, uh, like uh, static uh, snapshots of all the elliptic curve computation. It means that at uh, startup, we allocate uh, contiguous uh, memory pages with all allocated and utilized uh, MPIs. And we, when we go to handshake, we just uh, copy the whole uh, pages uh, in a stream uh, fashion instead of and so I think I'd copy and uh, MPIs uh, separately. Uh, we still use uh, memory pools, but not so heavily because we mostly move from MPIs to raw uh, integer computations, just like another um, libraries. So we are approaching the end of the presentation with a proposal uh, for the yeah. kernel inclusion of the kernel TLS implementation. Uh, this is an uh, example of proposed API for socket API. More details will, will be described in our paper and this uh, link to our GitHub issue when we appreciate you to comment uh, the uh, API design and uh, propose some uh, additions or requests for the API. Uh, typically, we propose to a uh, lot uh, public key uh, with a certificate and private key using existing add key API. So we create a separate key link uh, for each pair of certificate and uh, private key. Next, we uh, create a normal uh, socket and uh, make a set socopt just like on the KTLS. And in the set uh, socopt, we point out the key required key ring, uh, cipher suite, and uh, TLS version. Next, uh, accept uh, system call will return uh, you not only TCP connected socket, but also the socket with uh, established uh, TLS connection. This uh, question how to uh, fall back uh, from uh, if we not able to uh, establish a uh, handshake to user space uh, about SNI and so on. The, all the details will be described in um, paper and uh, in GitHub issue. Uh, we uh, propose uh, the server-side only implementation because servers are 
uh, it seems uh, sabots will benefit uh, mostly from the uh, internal inclusion. Uh, next, we propose to uh, perform full TLS handshakes in software queue, just like uh, TCP handshakes. Uh, this will improve uh, overall throughput and uh, reduce the latency. And also, while uh, software queue uh, uh, processes a bunch of network packets, we can make only one FPU context uh, uh, storing and uh, restoring in context of uh, for the whole uh, bunch of uh, TLS uh, handshakes. We made the micro benchmark uh, showing how important uh, to make exactly one uh, FPU uh, save and restore for a batch of uh, network packets uh, in uh, software queue processing. Uh, so uh, it's just have no uh, point to, uh, to save and restore FPU context for each uh, packets or each uh, TLS handshake message. Um, actually, most of the code um, for uh, TLS handshakes can be found in uh, current uh, kernel, uh, Linux kernel. Uh, for example, this asymmetric uh, case management, this uh, add key API, the curve uh, 25519 RSA and uh, maybe uh, almost all the uh, symmetric uh, crypto algorithms are already in uh, the Linux kernel. So it uh, allows us uh, to introduce only about 13,000 lines of code of actual uh, TLS state machine, uh, TLS tickets, the NIST elliptic curve and the uh, logic for cipher suits. Uh, so before uh, going to upstream, we are planning to finish this uh, tasks. Uh, the first one is to finish our um, uh, work with uh, performance optimization of an IST uh, curve. The second one is uh, we want to go to upstream with TLS 1.3. And uh, also this uh, task to merge our current uh, TLS implementation with the uh, kernel asymmetric keys API because at the moment it, this wasn't done yet. Uh, that's all we love to hear from you uh, if you can benefit from uh, the kernel TLS uh, handshakes. In particular, uh, if you can benefit even on uh, 1.2, uh, uh, TLS handshakes and don't need uh, 1.3. Uh, also, we'd love to see your feedback about our API, uh, some implementation requests and so on. And also we will happy to receive your questions on uh, our email or GitHub. So that's all, thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, so looks like I don't see any questions. Um, if anyone has any, I'll give uh, a few seconds, but um, we'll go ahead and proceed to the next talk otherwise. Uh, Tom, I just have a uh, comment from, uh, for, from our side that uh, unfortunately I had not enough uh, time to uh, say, uh, speak more about uh, the circuit API proposal for kernel TLS uh, handshakes. So I appreciate if you can visit our GitHub issue 1433 uh, to comment and read more about the uh, particular uh, technical proposal for the API. The comments are very important for us to make the right uh, design of the API and uh, uh, may make something useful for other people. So uh, what forum do you think the discussion would take place on the APIs? Is, is this on NetDev or somewhere else? Uh, we, we had uh, internally, we had a lot of discussions about uh, which features of uh, TLS constraints we have to support. For example, uh, how to manage SNIs, uh, how, uh, how SNIs uh, should be matched. Uh, we propose CBPF uh, custom matching for SNIs. Uh, there are many issues with uh, TLS uh, API, like uh, sometimes for the same SNI, you need to 
lot uh, different um, certificates and private key in the case if the CI uh, uh, CI uh, certificate was re revoked. So uh, sp if we speak on engineering level, uh, probably it's not so complex, but overall API and uh, the features to support uh, certificates management are uh, quite uh, complex. Okay, so uh... So we'll look for that, uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the next talk. Thank you. Hey, thank you.